Hey everybody, it's Standing for Truth, and here it is, the much anticipated debate between Dr. Kent Hovind and a posteriori uno. What's the best explanation for the diversity of life, creation or evolution? Enjoy. For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Okay, hey guys, we're here again. Thank you so much. This one is going to be a blast. I'm really excited. I want to thank uh, Dr. Hoven for joining us, as well as Esteban here, uh, who goes by a posteri uno. Tough one to say. I hope I said it right. Um, so we'll get right into it. We've got um, a, a formal debate. We'll have opening statements, rebuttals, um, a short discussion, and a short closing with um, with some Q and A. So. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to uh, the evolutionist, who would be Esteban, who can start off with his opening statement. Yes, hello. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first, I'd, before I begin, I'd like to thank I Am That I Am for hosting, uh, Standing for Truth, for setting this all up and moderating, and uh, for Kent Hoven for taking the time out of his day and agreeing to do this after uh, a couple of failed attempts a few months ago to have a debate on the non sequitur show. Uh, I also want to thank standing for truth for an awesome trailer. Uh, you definitely flattered me quite a bit. Uh, and I'm thrilled that you found a picture of me at this year's Ark encounter protest with Aaron Ra. It was a pretty special day. <clears throat> Anyway, about me, I am a posteriori unum, but since that is a mouthful, uh, everyone can call me Esteban. Uh, that's my pseudonym for all online interactions. Uh, I'm an atheist and um, very interested in science and philosophy, and I try to be an honest interlocutor, and I'm always glad to be given the opportunity to spread a little bit of skepticism and rationality. Uh, that being said, I'll start by uh, clarifying that despite the fact that I'm not a biologist, my goal today is to show that biology overwhelmingly supports evolution as the best explanation for the diversity of life on Earth. And I intend to illustrate that all the evidence we have available shows that Living things as we see them now did in fact evolve from a common ancestor and were not created by some sort of God or universe creating pixies. Uh, and I'm sure uh, you, are, you, Mr. Hovind, are very familiar with at least the word, uh, the law of monophyly that states that no organism can outgrow its heritage. You say that we evolutionists say that, for example, a dog produces a non-dog, when you know and I know that we do not say that at all. It is quite the opposite. Uh, this is a straw man of evolution that has been pointed out and corrected uh, a great many times. Uh, that I think it, I, that it couldn't just be a mere misunderstanding or the result of ignorance of the facts, but that it's a bald face and, and shameless misrepresentation that it, that you repeat over and over and over. But what I would like to address all the straw men in the room that you repeatedly claim that we evolutionists believe that we came from a rock or <clears throat> something of that sort, a soup, depending on uh, your mood, I suppose. But not one person, not one evolutionist ever uh, that I'm aware of has ever said anything even remotely close to that. Uh, and the irony to that is that you literally do believe that humans were created using clay via an incantation spell. I think is hilarious. You claim that there are six different types of evolution. You know this isn't true, and it never has been true. 
there is one scientific theory that explains the biodiversity of Earth, of, of life on Earth. All the other things you say, a part of evolution, have absolutely nothing to do with biology. The Big Bang, stellar formation, planetary formations, etc. But I am not correcting you here. You've been corrected already. I'm just pointing out all these straw men and uh, all the misrepresentations of what evolution actually is. Uh, you might point out that I'm addressing arguments that you made in the past and that uh, not what you said here today. Well, to be fair, uh, you haven't said anything here today. So, but correct me if I'm wrong, but you do, you do use these arguments. You have used them in the past. And if, if you say that you no longer hold that point of view or whatever, then feel free to correct me on, on any of those that, uh, any of the straw men that you no longer make. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> and then I'd like to talk about this idea of evolutionism. It seems that you want to say that belief in evolution is religion and being so, you're implying that it's somehow false, that we believe in it without evidence, which, I mean, that, that, that means we would pretty much be on the same page there, because if it were a religion, I would say, yeah, it's probably false, and it's probably believed based on no evidence. Uh, but what else is a religion? Creationism, Christianity. So by that chain of logic there, uh, if I were to concede that it is somehow a religion despite uh, not fitting the definition of religion in any way whatsoever, then uh, <clears throat> your creationism would fare no, none the better. Uh, one, of, one of the major concerns that a lot of creationists have is that they think evolution, should it be true, threatens the idea of God and that it contradicts what the Bible says, um, which of course it does, um, but it doesn't contradict in such a way that it creates this dichotomy that it's either life evolved or a God exists. Uh, and you know that. Oh, praise. It looks like you, um, it looks like you've got your noise in the background there, praise. Oh, I'm so you guys can hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. No problem. I stopped your timer for that there, uh, Esteban, so continue on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just got to get back on track. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it creates this dichotomy that, that either life evolved or that a god exists, but when in fact you know that uh, the vast majority of even Christians do accept evolution as the best explanation. Though it is not a dichotomy, there could be easily be a God that put in place the mechanisms by which evolution uh, happens, so, and, and, and it's totally reconciled. But I, I don't believe that either. <clears throat> uh, how much time do I have? Or... How much time was that? Uh, I think you're at about uh, seven minutes or so. So you got a couple more minutes. All right. <clears throat> and there, there is no other approach to learning about the natural world besides science. It, it tells a beautiful story about thousands of people actually trying to learn and experimenting and overcoming great obstacles and limitations 
it gives us a window into the past, helps us understand the present, and even predict the future. Uh, and, and its fossils are, are some exceptional windows into the past that that have great stories to tell. It's unfortunate that all the amazing insights that they they can give us are lost on creationists because they have to be ignored lest lest Mr. Creationist uh, hear the words millions or billions of years. And conversely, the Bible is a collection of stories written by people who did not understand the world around them. Unlike science, it does not change and it does not improve. The authors couldn't even begin to imagine the complexity of life and other natural processes on Earth. It, it is precisely the fact that it doesn't change that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just no good. We can't learn anything from it. <clears throat> and uh, that's all I have to say for the introduction. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that introduction there. Uh, that was yeah. uh, in between nine and ten minutes. So therefore, Dr. Hoven, you get uh, equal time. And uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you so much. My name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science and math 15 years in Christian schools and now travel and speak on the subject of creation versus evolutionism. And it is certainly a ism along with the lines of communism, Nazism, socialism and Marxism, in my humble, totally unbiased opinion. Unum, the U U United, everybody agrees. Uh, a pastori is the name you've chosen, which means related or derived by reasoning, observed facts. Uh, I guess I'd be curious, have there been any observed facts uh, where any dog has ever produced a non-dog or cat produced a non-cat or cow come from a non-cow? Has any farmer in the history of the world ever observed these facts or is this something you believe? It is your religion. Uh, I didn't I, look, I didn't know much about you, uh, Esteban, and I see you have two pseudonyms. You don't ever give your real name. I don't know why you don't do that. My name is Kent Oven. Okay, here you are with uh, Mr. Nelson at the some kind of rally there and... Uh, and a couple of other folks who claim to be atheists. Let's see, Proverbs 13. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Uh, you claim you're going to, I, what's this first word here, Esteban? Uh, something under religion, something we can find a cure. What's that word on your t-shirt? Go ahead and interrupt me here. Together. Together, Together we can we find, can a, find cure. a cure. You, good. Hey, I will work with you on finding the cure for evolutionism. It is a religious belief. It is an evil religious belief. Let's work together and find a cure. Okay, my position is very simple. God made the entire world in six days about 6,000 years ago. If that's, I think, all the scientific evidence points to that. I think that's the only way it works biologically. In biology, certain animals have to have each other to, uh, to survive. There's uh, thousands of relationships where they have to have each other, symbiotic relationships. <laughs> You have it between plants and uh, plants, between plants and animals, uh, between animals and animals. I don't think it's possible to define, to uh, give a definition of a system that'll work with, without everything being created in six days. The Bible has the plants made on one day, and they breathe in CO2 and give off oxygen. Animals made a couple days later, and they breathe in oxygen, give off CO2. Symbiotic relationships. I defy somebody, including you, to find an explanation for how this could evolve slowly over millions of years without resorting to a story. Where is the scientific evidence? Science deals with things we can observe, study, and test. Where is not a story about how it might have happened long ago and far away? I would like to see this happen. Where is the science, which is things we can observe, study, and test? So my goal is to present the truth and expose error, to strengthen the faith of the believers, to win the loss to Christ, including you, and to convert you to the Bible position and to Christ if need be. You claim you're an atheist. I don't think that's possible to be an atheist. I don't think you, I don't I doubt you know everything and you would have to know everything to know God doesn't exist. You'd have to be in all places at all times at the same time to prove there's no God. That is just simply not possible. You are probably more agnostic, which means ignorant, don't know, but you cannot possibly actually be an atheist, Esteban. You might want to rethink about your your title there. Um, science, definition of science, systemized knowledge derived from observation, study, experimentation, etc. I think all the science says dogs produce dogs, no exceptions. And you say I've been corrected on this a bunch of times. I've never been corrected. People have made statements, but it wasn't a correction. 
If I said two plus two is four and somebody said, no, no, it's not, it's five. We corrected you on that. No, they didn't correct me. They gave an error and they have given some errors saying that uh, I'm not I'm wrong about my position. here. I'm not wrong. I'm perfectly correct on this one. Some people try to limit the definition of science to the natural world, which you kind of did in your introduction here. The operation of the world might be understood by scientific discoveries. We can understand how it operates. I have a pretty good understanding of how cars operate, internal combustion engines, be it fuel injection or carbureted venturi style injection. I, have, I, I think I could take a test against anybody on the basic understanding of how cars operate. That would have nothing to do with how the car originated or was built. Somebody's shaking their mic or breathing into it. Is that you, Esteban? I want to shut his mic off for a second. Okay. Um, the origin of the world may not be understood by scientific discoveries. How it operates can be understood by science. How it originated is not possible to understand how it happened by science. Not possible. Operation of a computer can be understood by science. The origin of the computer is not explained the same way. You have to have a designer. Somebody has to design the computer. And somebody has to design the origin of life, the origin of the planets, the origin of matter, the origin of time, space. It all has to have a designer. Now, religion, a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. This is evolution to a T. I admit, I have a religious belief that God made the world. You guys do not seem capable of admitting that evolution is a religious belief. You believe it. You've never observed any matter create itself out of nothing. You've never observed any matter organize itself you've, without an organizer. You've never observed life come from non-life. You've never observed any animal produce a different kind of animal ever. No farmer in the universe will tell you dogs produce anything but dogs. That's all we observe. When they plant corn, they expect to get corn. And you said, well, of course, that's what we predict. D dogs will always produce dogs. Hovind's been corrected. Esteban, your charts in school show an amoeba or a paramecium or some single-celled organism turning into a dog. Was the original, let's call it a paramecium or an amoeba. Was an amoeba a dog? Do amoebas today still produce amoebas? Well, somewhere along the line, one of those amoebas produced something that was non-amoeba. You guys do not get it. You do believe animals changed into different kinds of animals. And now that they are what they are, the dogs are dogs. Now they're always going to be dogs. And you think I've been corrected? You guys have been corrected on this a thousand times. It's, it's idiotic to believe an amoeba can turn to a dog. But you do believe that, and the charts show it, and that's my objection. I just want the books to be accurate. I love science. We should teach evolution in a religion class. It is a powerful, well-believed, uh, uh, many people believe it. Many people believe in Islam, too. Many people believe in uh, the sun god. Many people. There have been thousands of religions that a lot of people believe in. I think we should teach that to the kids. Hey, kids, did you know in India, in Hinduism, a lot, millions of people believe if you drink the cow pee, it'll give you superpowers or give you special powers. Okay, they really believe that. It's not true, but it is true they believe that. So that should be taught in a religion class. And we should teach the kids in a religion class. Hey, boys and girls, did you know a lot of people believe a big bang of nothing produced everything? And then that nothing got organized and produced a world. And in that hard, rocky planet, which cooled down from a molten mass, Slowly, life evolved in the soup that formed as it cooled and it rained on the rocks. You do believe you came from a rock, and a lot of people believe it. You are right, and a lot of Christians believe it. You are right, Esteban. It doesn't make it true any more than drinking cow pee is going to give you superhuman powers. So, the Bible says in six days, the Lord made everything. God claimed that in his book. Now, I, I freely admit, this is my religious belief. I'm not requiring everybody to be taught this in public schools. You guys are requiring everybody to be taught your religion in public schools. The burden of proof's on you, not me, to prove my point. <clears throat> we can test this idea. Was the earth really created in six days? Well, let's put it to a scientific test. I predict the universe will show evidence of order and design everywhere we look. Macro, micro, doesn't matter. Look, at the, look through a telescope or a microscope. You're going to see design everywhere. I predict there will be thousands of symbiotic relationships, and there are. I predict there will be limits to the variations life can produce. Dogs produce dogs, but they're always a dog. You may get a Chihuahua or a Great Dane, but there's a limit. You're never going to get a dog as big as Texas or as small as a flea. There's a limit to the dogs. I wish you guys would admit that. Okay? I predict there will be a purpose to life. What are we here for? Just to survive and produce the most offspring? Well, if the most advanced creatures are men, why do they only produce one baby every nine months and 20 minutes maximum? Why don't they produce one every 20 minutes, period, like the amoeba do? If we're the advanced creatures, why are some, there's some creatures able to produce 
400,000 offspring in their lifetime. Uh, they're the most advanced creatures. If that's indeed the only purpose of life is to see who can make, who can make the most babies. I predict there'll be non-material things like love, justice, mercy, innate knowledge of right and wrong, conscience, truth. <clears throat> Where do these things grow out of the evolutionary theory? Why do people have a sense of mercy? Why would anybody under the evolution theory, you, you're driving down the highway, you see a lady or cars broke down and it's snow all over the place. You want to be merciful and stop and help them. Is there any, any biological reason why that would go? Why, why that would even exist? Why would anybody have a sense of mercy? You see somebody who's hurt and you want to help them. I, I like to see how that evolved in over millions of years. To me, the most ruthless survive. If somebody else is hurt and there's competition for the food supply, man, shoot them. Less, why would, any, why would every, every creature on the planet evolve the ability to produce offspring? Why didn't any of them just evolve the ability to live forever? Why would any animal want to make more babies, which only increases the competition for the food supply? That is exact opposite of what evolution really, really believed. I predict there'll be a way to find the creator, like a book. I got a book right here beside me. I'll read it to you, Esteban, if you want to hear it. Um, I predict there'll be an afterlife where you face the creator. The Bible says before the flood, the people lived to be 900. That's what it says. I predict there will be a creation event and a golden age. There are legends about that. Lots of legends about a golden age when man used to live to be 1,000. I predict there will be skeletons found of people showing signs of growing a larger brow ridge, which never stops growing as you grow. If you could live past 150 or 200, your brow ridge would get pretty big like the Neanderthal. I predict there'll be biological problems like wisdom teeth because we don't live as long now because our jaws don't get as big. 30 seconds. I predict there'll be a longing for the universal Garden of Eden thinking. Anyway, I go through a lot of stuff in my seminar and my time is about up here, but I want to get to one more point. The evolution worldview or the creation worldview teaches there was a flood. The flood explains why there are fossils at all, why there are petrified trees standing up in the vertical position. I cannot believe the answer one guy gave for that. He said they got petrified, and then the dirt washed away, and the new layers filled in around them. You've got to be kidding. Stood there for millions of years petrified. Here's one with coal in the bottom and coal on the top. Runs through two layers of coal with rock in between. I think these petrified trees in the vertical position defy an evolutionary explanation, and they demonstrate clearly all the layers formed rapidly in one big flood in one year. My time is up. Your turn. Take it away, Esteban. Awesome. Thanks so yes, much for that ahead. opening presentation there, Dr. Hoven. Uh, Esteban, take the uh, necessary time that, that you need for your rebuttal, and then we'll allow Dr. Hoven to have equal time. Go ahead. Yes, of course. <clears throat> uh, well, thank you uh, for being unbelievably predictable. Uh, uh, right. Just as I knew you would mention that we believed uh, that we came from a rock and that life came from non-life and, and that dogs didn't produce anything but a dog. That's why, I, uh, that's why I said all those things in the beginning, just to clear the air. And you have been corrected on these things many, many times. We, you know that the, the law of monophyly states that, that everything will, be, will, will never outlive its heritage and <clears throat> and I noticed you forgot uh, to say creationism when you were mentioning all those isms like communism and Nazism which has absolutely nothing to do with anything we're talking about today but creationism is in fact a religious idea and you, you literally just made all the same straw man arguments that I, I knew you would. <clears throat> and you said that the, that the Bible says that, that there were plants and then there were animals and then there were people. You know, it, it also says that plants were created before the sun was created. Mm -hmm. So somehow they photosynthesized without uh, ultraviolet light to even available to, to, to make their food and grow. So we know that that's not true. That didn't happen. And who's writing this story as, as God is doing all this thing? Is it the Sumerians? Were they sitting there dictating, writing this all down as they're watching God create the world 6,000 years ago? You said that I, I don't know everything, so how could I be an atheist? Well, I don't need to know everything 
I know that there is no God. I know, I know that in the same way that you know that there are no fairies, that there are no ring race, there are no bullrogs, uh, because there is absolutely no evidence to, to suggest any such thing exists. You don't need to know everything in the world. I don't know who told you that in order to be an atheist, you have to know every single thing and to be absolutely omnipotent. I don't subscribe to the whole, oh, I'm an agnostic atheist because I want to cover my bases and I want to, you know, be a little softer on that and not get myself sucked into some philosophical uh, corner. But you could try to put me in that corner if you want. <clears throat> and and then you mentioned evolution again about, and you said about mat. I've never seen matter coming out of nothing. Well, of course, and also evolution has absolutely nothing to do with matter coming out of nowhere. Nobody anywhere said anything about that. As far as we know, all the matter in the universe has always existed. We don't even know that. Also, you said it says about life coming from non-life, and I've never observed life coming from non-life. Well, no, of course not, and also not nothing to do with the theory of evolution. That would be abiogenesis. I know you've heard this word many times before. <clears throat> and, and about the, 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 this argument that you like to make the, about things becoming something else. It, what, what you're doing is you're making an argument from incredulity, but not just an ordinary argument from incredulity. No, you have a tactic of planting this logical fallacy inside the minds of your listeners, not just yourself. An example, by asking me how pine trees and elephants are related, you are purposely choosing two organisms that are so vastly different and counting on people, namely your audience, on thinking that it sounds ridiculous. And you know what? The theory of evolution is, is a lot of times very counterintuitive and but you know what science isn't based on? Intuition. It's based on evidence and, and, and logical reasoning. It is based on verifiable data and facts. But you know that your audience will hear the words pine tree, elephant, starfish, whatever you choose for that day, whatever you're in the mood for. Uh, and their intuition is just going to tell them, oh, that, that can't be true. Uh, this is a tactic that is deliberately misleading. That's why you go back to this all the time. <clears throat> the thing is, you've been saying the things for decades and decades, and your listeners lap all that up. <clears throat> but you, you, okay, the, you have first have to show all you have to do is show how a, a Chihuahua and a Great Dane are related. I believe you mentioned those two earlier. Uh, well, you would consider them the dog kind. Now, the dog kind and the wolf kind, like, would you consider those two together the canine kind? Or is it still the dog kind? I don't know where you draw these lines. And so on and so forth up to the the bear dog kind and the dog bear kind and the carnivore kind and are, are those is that all one kind is it a giant nested hierarchy or uh well that's what we're saying but they're still part of the mammal kind aren't they <clears throat> and and then what about reptiles are they part of the tetrapod kind or the amniote kind you you haven't drawn any of these lines you 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 draw them in your head arbitrarily and you can move the goalpost as needed you know what if i show you a fox is a fox part of the dog kind or is it part of a different kind is it the fox kind <clears throat> are elephants and pine trees related yes they are they're both part of the eukaryote kind uh does a pine tree ever produce an elephant no. I'm sorry to and interrupt there, Esteban. I just wanted to let you know that you are at about the seven-minute mark. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. That's fine. That's fine. 
<clears throat> Does a pine tree ever produce an elephant? No, and it never will. And it will produce an ever so slightly different pine tree, still part of the eukaryote kind or whatever kind it ever was before. I know you know this. I know, I know you know it's a straw man. I know it's a straw man. And maybe we could try not to use that anymore. Anyway, that's uh, about all I had there. Well, thank you for your rebuttal there, Esteban. Uh, we will now move on to Dr. Hoven's rebuttal round. Dr. Hoven, you have approximately seven and a half minutes. Go ahead and take your time. All right. Well, thank you so much, Esteban. I do say that there are six different meanings to the word evolution, just to keep it clear, because you guys can continually try to muddy the water. You give evidence for number six, microevolution variations within the same kind, and then try to get to the students to believe this covers it all, like you just did a minute ago, probably not even realizing it. Uh, you, are they the same kind? Well, they have the subspecies, Canis lupus familiaris, which is the dog. Then there's the species, which does include the dog and the wolf. Man has been trying for, for since he's been around, trying to classify animals and to put them in certain categories. <clears throat> for instance, does it have hair on the outside of its body? Well, then let's put it in a category. We, we try to do the same thing with tools and nuts and bolts and screws. We try to categorize them into different areas. I think that's just a natural human instinct to want to do that. Is our categorization, is our system correct? I don't know. They change things all the time. They change, they say, oh, that really ought to go in this species over here. Where does a platypus go? I don't know. I mentioned we organize in our shop our screwdrivers in one place, our pliers in another, and our hammers in another. But yet when you get a fencing pliers, which doubles as a hammer, a wire cutter, a bolt cutter, and a, a crowbar, where do you put that fence pliers at? I don't, I don't know, but put it somewhere. <clears throat> I don't think the fence pliers cares where we put it, and I don't think the dog cares where we think it goes. I don't think the wolf cares either. But we've decided to develop a system of classification. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, developed by Carolus Linnaeus. <clears throat> and it holds up pretty good most of the time. You mentioned about a fox. Does a fox fit into the dog kind? Well, people argue about that. It's certainly a canine. So it's considered in the a canine uh, family. But is it in the same? Is it, are all the carnivores canines? Well, no. The cat is in the carnivore family. So where exactly does the biblical kind fit in? Which is it? Is it genus, family, order? In some cases, it might be genus. In some cases, it might be family. Other cases, it might be order. I don't think the animals care where we put them. I think we're trying very hard to divide them, but I think in most of the cases, a five-year-old can tell you if they're the same kind of animal, and a five-year-old can tell you a pine tree and an elephant are not the same kind of life form. Okay? So, Mr. Nelson, yeah, I saw you with your picture of him, a picture of you with him there, thinks that all life forms are related because they're eukaryotes. Well, that's the domain, eukaryotes, which includes flowers. Do you think flowers, let's take roses as an example, are roses related to dogs because they're eukaryotes, because they have a cell which has a nucleus wrapped in a membrane? Well, in that case, I could say sailboats are related to uh, cars and bicycles because they have metallic nuts and bolts and screws. Well, that proves they're related. This is the kind of stupid logic you guys resort to. Of course, they're related. They're both eukaryotes. That was Mr. Nelson's <laughs> response. You've got to be kidding. That's an answer. Um, all eukaryotes. So um, I want to cover a couple things here. This, uh, 457, I got 10,000 slides here. Science comes from the Latin word scientia, which means knowledge. We know dogs produce dogs. We do not know dogs and elephants are related. We don't know that. You can believe that if you'd like, but it's not something you can know. Science means knowledge. Science, knowledge are about our study of the natural world based upon facts learned through experiments and observation. All right. Accessed a couple days ago. I agree. All experiments tell us dogs produce dogs. If you wish to believe otherwise, you can believe whatever you want to believe, but that is your belief. It is not a science. We don't observe elephants produce anything but elephants. Nothing. Okay. What is science? Robert Kramp. Repeated, observed, observation, observation, and experimentation. Knowledge. From careful study of the structure and behavior of the physical world, especially by watching, measuring, doing experiments. I agree. That is common sense science. I'm going to try to hit some of the highlights that you covered here that I left behind hanging. Uh, <clears throat> um, now let's see. You said you're not a biologist. I understand. I, I don't know who gets to decide who's a biologist or not. Biology means the study of life. I suppose you can get a McKinsey five-year-old brings in a walking stick today. She loves to study life. Uh, at what point do they get that cherished title of biologist? <laughs> okay. Uh, 
And you mentioned about me doing straw men. I have, I have never done that. I, I'm, the reason I'm telling the same arguments that I told 20 years ago is because they're right. Two plus two was four or 5,000 years ago, and two plus two is going to be four in 10,000 years. I don't have to change. You guys say, well, science changes all. Yeah, because you're teaching some dumb stuff and mixing in with science. Real science doesn't change. Real science doesn't need to change. It's right. It's your evolution religion. You're trying to dress up as science. Of course, you got to change it all the time. Now, let's see. Um, family trees. And you had a bunch of those. Uh, life from, okay, 371. Here we go. You guys do teach life, hang on, or organic or evolution, the origin of life. Nobody knows how life, the first living cell, originated. Nobody knows. Wikipedia talks about primordial soup. It was a chemical trans, a, a gradual chemical evolution of particles that contain carbon in the primordial soup. This is the theory. Accessed a couple months or a couple days ago. Primordial soup, prebiotic soup, hypothetical set of conditions that 4.4 billion years ago where life got started. Okay. Early Earth had a reducing atmosphere. This, by the way, is baloney. Earth has always had oxygen. This atmosphere, exposed to energy, made soup. The so compounds in the soup might have been concentrated at various locations, like oceanic vents. By further transformation, a more complex organic polymer and life developed in the soup. I'm not making this up, Esteban. This is what they're teaching the kids in school. I resent it. This isn't science. If this is science, do it again. Get some soup in the laboratory and make it come alive. And they've not come anywhere close to that. They tried desperately with a lot of taxpayer dollars to make some soup come alive, and they got a few amino acids. That's like dropping toothpicks and making a couple of letters of the alphabet accidentally. Oh, wow, look, I made an H. Oh, wow, over here, boys and girls, here's an M. Look at this, here's an M with toothpicks. That proves nobody writes the books in the library. That's the logic they're doing. They do not, oh, here's Berserk University. Many lines of evidence illuminate the origin of life. No, they don't. I'll debate every professor at Berkeley at the same time with half my brain tied behind my back. One guy asked 164 professors at Berkeley to debate. They all refused. So I came and spoke at Berkeley. And I put a chair up on the platform. I said, where are you guys? You believe in evolution? Come on, get up here. Put your money where your mouth is. They do not. Okay, I'll, I'll skip all that here. Uh, you can learn important hypothesis regarding when, where, and how life originated. This is part of the evolution theory, the origin of life. Now, I know you guys want to limit it to living things once, things, once life gets started. I know you, desperately you want to limit it down to that. Um, cover all this in my video. Okay, then we cover the macroevolution. Where's the fam trees of life? Here we go, all right? Uh, hang on. My computer is uh, not going fast enough compared to what I would like to say. Uh, <clears throat> the books in school do teach that all life forms have a common ancestor. I'll show you. They do believe, you do teach, you want everybody to be taught that we came from an amoeba, which came from nothing, which I think is absolutely ludicrous. Now, if you wish to believe that, that is perfectly fine. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, I'm in the wrong one here, part four. Okay. I'll give you all my slides if you'd like to look at them here. Esteban, come on down to our dinosaur adventure land, and as a reward, I'll give you a set of all my videos, my slides, and you can show me which ones specifically have been corrected. I'd like to see that. Uh, uh, variations happen, but they have limits, uh, right? Same slides I've been using for years. Okay, there are quite a variety of shapes of the human nose. There's still a nose. There's quite a variety of shapes of the human ear. There's still an ear. There's a variety of shapes of eyeballs, and there's still an eyeball. Variations certainly happen. There's variations in the foot shape. There's variations in the hand shape. There's variations in skin color. There's variations in lip sizes and styles. There's variations in dogs, but they're still dogs. Here's uh, BBC News. Looks like 95% of current dogs came from three original founding females. Well, I, I, I think I could believe that. And it was a dog. Well, three dogs, okay. They call it divergent evolution. Giving it a fancy name doesn't change the facts. It's still a dog. Dalmatian, poodle, all these dogs came from a common ancestor. There are two different species of squirrels now on opposite sides of the Grand Canyon, the Kaibab squirrel and the Abert squirrel. They might have had a common ancestor called a squirrel. You guys believe squirrels are related to pine trees. I think you need some help. Come on down. We'll teach you some real science at Dinosaur Adventureland. Your turn. 
Well, thanks so much for that uh, rebuttal, Dr. Hoven. Uh, now we will uh, enter into the free flowing discussion portion. Now, this will consist though of no interruptions and as equally timed as necessary and of course possible. I'm hoping that I need not to step in, but if so, of course I will. Uh, we do still need time for a short question and answer. Therefore, what I'm gonna do, gentlemen, is give you a two minute warning before the discussion is over. And then that way things can be wrapped up uh, therefore, go ahead, guys, whoever wants to start. No, you go ahead, for Esteban. <clears throat> well, again, you mentioned abiogenesis, and uh, I know you want to, to tack it onto evolution, but in no textbook on evolution does it also include, as part of the theory, abiogenesis. It might mention it in passing. It might say that, yeah, we don't have a... a, a an exact working theory of, of how life came to be in the first place, but uh, they certainly wouldn't say that uh, that is part of the theory of evolution by means of natural selection. Well, I showed you right on screen, I'll do it again here, that uh, chemical evolution, uh, the, look up primordial soup in Wikipedia. Here's primordial soup accessed a couple days ago. This is, you have to have life in order to get it to be able to change to other kinds of life. I know you guys are frantically trying to avoid this embarrassing hole in your theory, but what evolved? How did this, so are you telling me that if you, if I let you start with a living thing, we'll take it, a, a, make it a, a single cell creature, which is incredibly complex on its own. I'll give you a single cell creature, pick one, and then you could develop all the life forms from that by your theory. Is that what you're telling us? That if we, if we stop the abiogenesis talk, Start with life. You, you really believe everything came from a, a single cell creature? <clears throat> it never changed. Or something of a proto cell. Like I said, we, we, we don't have a, an exact explanation of that. Yeah, we have words like primordial soup. We have all these hypotheses of what may have happened, but we haven't pinned it down yet. Uh, but yes, with, starting with life. Uh, okay. That's well, that's where evolution. A... I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, that's where evolution begins. So if you haven't pinned it down yet, why are we teaching it in the schools like it's a fact? You guys have to have life before you can have your evolution. You just want to go ahead and teach your religion without giving an explanation of where it started. I think that's grossly unfair. That's tax supported religion. I don't want to pay for that. Why don't you guys go start a private school and teach your theories to anybody that wants to pay and come learn it? Why don't you do what the Christians have to do? They got to pay for the public school and pay for their private school for their kids to go because they don't want them taught that stuff. If you guys really want them taught that life came from non-living material and this early uh, cell developed into elephants and whales and pine trees, if you really want that taught, go start a private school and pay for it and teach. I don't care what you teach at your own expense. You can teach anything you want. I just don't want to pay for that dumb idea to be taught in the school system. I think most other thinking people resent that also. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, I saw you use Wikipedia earlier. Would you consider that a, a, a reliable source? Oh, it, it shows the popular thinking, you know, of people. Uh, I, I, I quote from thousands of sources. Wikipedia may or may not be right. I don't know. I'm sitting right beside probably 300 textbooks. This is what my concern is. Is a, is a high school textbook a reliable source? I don't think so, but the, that's, what, that's what we're paying for. You're trying to avoid my obvious question. Do you think all of us should be forced to pay to teach the kids that life came from non-living material with no designer and that first life form somehow developed into whales and pine trees? That is what they're teaching, and this is not from Wikipedia. Some kind of common ancestor developed into all the animals, all the fungi, all the bacteria, everything came from a common ancestor. This is what they're teaching. This is a public school textbook picture showing that the protista turned into a human. Now, you said that they all stay in their same kind. Well, the protista apparently didn't stay in its kind because the protista turned into everything. So you're either con extremely confused or, or you're lying because you say, well, we, we teach animals always stay within their same clay. No, you don't. A protista it left its clade. In this one, here's the humans up here at the top of the chart. Here's the jellyfish at the bottom, the protista. 
So the protista turned into everything on this chart. You guys are, you're simply, I think, extremely confused or deliberately lying or both. You don't want it shown how stupid this is that a protista could turn to a human in all the different life forms. I'll give you life. I'll let you start with your protista. Is this chart accurate, Esteban? Is this what you believe? That everything can be traced back to a protista? Uh, I'll answer your two obvious questions first. Uh, yeah, I do believe that everything could be traced back to an original life form. I, I won't say protista. It could be could have been just uh, any any amoeba. kind of self replicating. No, not amoeba. They're modern. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, it was a magical amoeba, magical cell. Okay. <clears throat> no, they uh, they are just as evolved as we are. But anyway, the, that and yes, I I do think that it should be taught in, in, in our public schools because it is a fact. Hold and, on, wait, let's slow, slow down. This is a fact, and this should be taught in public schools. It is a fact that humans and whales and jellyfish came from a single-celled organism, call it whatever you want, some kind of magical cell that could produce varieties, whereas today, single-celled creatures, of which there are bazillions, they only produce the same kind. But somehow, it was different in the past. Would you explain how that is science? <clears throat> It, w it wasn't different in the past. It's exactly the same. But so a protista is exactly the same as a whale? Or this, this, this single cell, whatever you want to call it, is the same as a whale? I, is that what I just said? No. It, it's you the, said the they, they, they didn't change. The process has not changed. The process that turned exactly. a single-celled organism to a whale. That process. Where can I see oh. this process happening today? Where is any animal producing anything other than its obvious kind? It won't. You know it won't. That's I know not it what won't. It says. Bingo. They, the clades, the clades stack up. The clades you, stack up. Yes, you are. Uh, you're a human. You're an ape. You're a monkey. You're a primate. It goes all the way back, and you, you collect all the things that you were before. So I'm a collection of all of these. I'm a, am I a jellyfish too? No, uh, our lineage didn't come from a jellyfish. But if you trace both the jellyfish lineage and our lineage back far enough, it will meet up at one point. So if we all came from a single-celled creature, um, is your brain just a collection of these chemicals that got together by chance over billions of years? And if so... How can you explain reasoning processes? And maybe you got some chemicals in there backwards, Esteban. Not by chance, but by natural processes, such as natural selection. I think it was a natural process. You chose to have the chemicals in there backwards in this case. You chose to believe that we came from a single-celled organism. That's not science. Why can't you just admit, hey, Kent, you're right. This is something I believe. I cannot prove this. There are plenty of single-celled creatures out there. Go get, a, go get a laboratory full of them and turn them into a whale again or turn them into anything else. Where is this? Where can I see them even changing? To By the way, where is the 95% dog? If the dogs came from a protista, somewhere along the line, it was a 95% dog and a 94%, 92%. Did all of them die out and all we have today are the 100% dogs? Where is a 95% dog? I'd like to see one. <clears throat> I'm not actually sure I even understand the question of 95% dog. Everything is 100% of what it is at all times. At all times in history, you were always 100% human, I'm assuming. It, it, your children will be human 100%. And their children will be human 100%. But they will be a little bit different. Notice that you don't produce exact clones. You don't produce... I will say that Eric is an awful lot like you, but you do not produce clones. Every it's a little bit different. You know how this works. You, I'm, I, oh, I do. Read. That's what I'm trying to help you understand. I know how it works. <clears throat> and, uh, and and by the way, uh, the reason why I brought up uh, Wikipedia is not because I didn't think it was a reputable source. It's just that uh, I wanted to make sure that. Uh, if I gave you the Wikipedia definition of what a religion is, uh, just the brief thing that uh, that 
it, that would be acceptable to you. It's and then hot. we can compare that to it fix it. Uh, we can compare that definition to what we teach in biology. And if it has anything to do with that at all, it says religion is a social cultural system of design behaviors and practices, morals, worldviews, texts, sanctified places, prophecies, ethics, or organizations that relate to humanity to supernatural, transcendental, or spiritual elements. Well, that's evolution to a T, isn't it? Where's the spiritual element or the supernatural or the social and cultural behaviors and practices and morals? Well, guys, it has nothing to do with any of those things. Well, yeah, morals, you guys would love to avoid that. That's the whole purpose of your religion is to try to get you away from any accountability to a creator. Do you think when you die, Esteban, you're going to give any accountability for what you've done in your life? Well, I have if accountability you, now. Okay. So if you murdered your neighbor and got by with it and stole all his stuff and he never knew it and no, or nobody ever knew it and you got by, nobody ever found out, would there ever be a reckoning for that, uh, that murder of your neighbor and stealing everything? Or is that okay to do as long as you can get by? If the lion can eat the baby zebra and nobody can stop him, well, is that okay? Is it okay? No. The lion thinks it's great. Got a free meal. I don't think the mama zebra likes it. I sure don't think the baby zebra likes it. <clears throat> and it, it's, uh, you know, tough. I mean, yeah, you would want to have some justice and hopefully the murderers get caught and they get, they go to prison. But if they get away with it, then, I mean, that's just the way it is. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. So well, we've left a lot of top. You've uh, accused me of, you've accused me of, uh, basically lying on numerous occasions i'd like you to what's your best specific one you think i'm lying about uh, i may try to write frantically but uh any particular lies you'd like me to defend myself on that uh that evolutionists say that we came from rocks i i, I show hundreds of quotes about do you believe the Earth was a hot molten mass at one time, 4.6 billion years ago, and it cooled down from a hot molten mass like lava and developed a hard, rocky crust? Do you believe that? That's, I can show you in the books if I had time to find it, but there's hundreds of books. That's what they teach. Do you believe the Earth began as a hot ball of rock that, that cooled off from, from molten rock? Yes or no? Is the, no. Is the Earth a living thing that reproduces? <clears throat> oh, I didn't ask that. D did the earth begin know, as a hot that. ball of rock that cooled down into and solidified? Yes. Okay. But did it then begin that, to rain? What's that? that the, the, the counter question to that is, do you believe that the earth is a living thing that reproduces? Oh, I didn't say, I don't care if it, no, I, obviously it's not. But you do believe it was a hot ball of rock from a big bang or whatever, and it cooled down, and then it began to rain on the rocks for millions of years and produced ponds of soup of some kind, like I showed you right from quite a few sources, Berkeley University. Life started in this soup in the oceans, which came from the hot rocks that were from the Big Bang where nothing exploded. I know you guys oh. don't like it put so simply, but I like to keep it real simple. I don't want to hide behind nothing. You think you came from a rock, Esteban. You really do. One minute, guys. So, One minute for the discussion. Okay. So do, do you think that I think that rocks are living things that reproduce? I can't figure out how you think a rock was your great-great-grandpa, but that is what your religion ultimately boils down to. Uh, do you think that rocks are living things that reproduce? Absolutely not. But I think okay, a designer, a, a smart person, could take the <coughs> minerals in the rocks and develop things like cars or computers. I think an intelligent designer could take minerals right out of the ground and make computers, cars, boats, but it has to take an intelligent designer to take those rocks or dust and make man, in the case of man in the Bible. Intelligent designer could do that. Intelligent designers built this remote control out of things right out of the rocks. Every one of them, right out of the dirt. That can happen. Yes, sir. You think it happened by itself. I don't think a bottle cap could happen by itself. I think somebody had to design it. Do you guys believe elephants and whales came by themselves from the soup, which came from a rock? I wish you could admit that's your belief and then go teach it in a private school. Quit teaching it in my, at my expense. I'm sick of it. Go ahead. 
So, okay, uh, gentlemen, and, and I'll give you a chance there, uh, Esteban. We uh, we have concluded the discussion portion. We've got just a couple questions uh, for each of the debaters, um, but I think it might be good to give you uh, both a, a minute or whatever you feel is necessary just to wrap things up in the form of a concluding statement, if that works for you guys. Uh, works for me. I, it, it, right now? Sure, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> well, I, I, I have... I have attempted to get through to make you understand uh, a, a simple thing, and the and the reason for the the counter questions at the end is because the two things have nothing to do with each other. Rocks are not reproductive life forms, and so that that's not what the theory of evolution is is even talking about. That rocks is geology. Things happen, and we're not talking about abiogenesis either. We're talking about already having life. So do I think that we came from rocks? No, I do not. That is a straw man fallacy. <coughs> I've ever seen one. And I, I've tried to explain it in several ways and ask these questions so that it made you think about it. I don't know. It's been fun, though. I lost the page. Awesome. Well, you took about uh, one minute there, Esteban. So thanks for wrapping things up. Uh, we can now hand it over to Kent for his concluding statements. Okay. Here's a 2005 biology textbook. I have hundreds of them. I have 2018, I think, is my newest. They're expensive, okay? Let's see. The early origin of life experiments. Why is there a whole section in here, how, how life got started from non-living material? If it's not part of biology, take it out of the book, tear these pages out and teach it in a religion class. You want to start with life. I understand why you do, too, because that's a major hurdle. But if it's really not part of biology, this is my objection, Esteban. It's taught in the biology classes like it is part of biology. And it's not. It's a religious belief. <clears throat> I wish you guys would quit being hypocritical. Stand up for what you believe is true and say, look, get that out of the books. That's not part of our theory. Okay, well then get it out of the books. Help me out. I'll be glad to help you on that one. We can, you can get a picture of you and me, arms around each other with a picture, and I'll have standing for truth on my, or whatever it said. Uh, I, want, I want religion out of the schools too, the evolution religion. So, all right, go ahead. <clears throat> awesome, well, thank you for your concluding statement there. Dr. Hoven has been a very good debate, very lively. Uh, the time has flown by. We do just have a couple short questions for each of the debaters from the audience. Um, I saved them here, so let me just pull them up real quick, and we'll get the, um, the questions going. So the first question I have here is for Esteban. The question is from Sinnott, is his name in the chat. He asks, well, if biology best explains evolution, then ask him, how do you deal with the fact that there exist three main mitochondrial DNA haplogroups? which points us right back to Noah's three daughters-in-law. Go ahead. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't know anything about mitochondrial haplogroups. I mean, I really can't answer that question. I, I made it. I, I said in the beginning, I'm not a biologist. I just understand the, the uh, overall basic concepts. I have, I have some examples <clears throat> of things. I'm, I'm well convinced myself. I, but I, I can't answer very specific little questions, you know? No problem. And if, if the other debater wants to do a quick response at the end of each question, that's okay as well. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with that. I've heard little bits about it, about the mitochondrial DNA going to Noah's three daughters. I, but I'm not asking for that to be taught. I think the evidence, I believe that story is true, that Noah built the ark and he and his sons and their wives were the only survivors on there and his wife, Noah's wife. And that all humans came from those three reproducing couples. That I, I believe that's true. <coughs> and I think <coughs> real scientific evidence would be unable to, to refute that. And possibly someday could prove it to be true. 
But again, I'm not making everybody pay for that to be taught. He wants everybody to pay to teach. We all came from Iraq, and that is what they teach. Okay. Thank you for your responses, gentlemen. Uh, next question is for Dr. Hoven. He asks, uh, Tony Reed says the hydroplate theory has a heat problem. Is this true? And if so, how would it be solved? That would take hours to explain. On my video series, I talk about Walt Brown's theory, which I think is correct, a hydroplate, meaning the crust of the earth is, make, is broken up into plates. And I think everybody agrees it is broken up into plates, some are, and there's some are moving around, the, the fault lines, et cetera. Uh, I, I taught earth science 15 years. We could talk all day on that if you'd like. Walt Brown says, under about 10 miles of rock, there used to be a layer of water, which it seems to be what the Bible teaches. And that broke forth and went shooting up to the, stop, up to the top uh, along these fault lines. And the, the plates of earth, huge trillions of pounds of plates of earth, slid on this water while it was escaping, hydroplate. I think that's true. I think it's logical. It's much more logical than thinking all this massive earth was squeezed into a dot smaller than a period on a page. That's ridiculous. But I think the hydroplate theory, the movement of rock sliding on other rock would produce enormous amounts of heat. I agree. The water would provide one buffering force. The second buffering force, I'm very strongly in the camp of those who believe there was a canopy of ice above the atmosphere, probably 10 miles up. Anybody that's ever sprayed a can of hairspray or spray paint knows when you release pressure, it takes the heat away. It gets cold in your hand. So if the atmosphere was squeezed down to 10 miles and that broke open at the same time, the expanding atmosphere would absorb all that heat. So I think they balanced out. Uh, but again, I'm not asking for all that to be taught. I think there's a lot of research been done on the hydroplate theory. So far, I'm not aware of anything scientifically that has proven it incorrect. If you had something heating up the earth, like raining, latent heat of condensation when it rains, and you had an expanding atmosphere at the same time, it'd be a canceling effect. Thanks for that response and answer, Dr. Hoven. Uh, Esteban, did you have a quick uh, response to that as well? Uh, hydroplate theory, is this, is this a creationist thing? No, no, it's evolutionist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wh wh whatever you just said, this, it sounded uh, like cr completely crazy, so I don't know. Maybe I misunderstood <laughs> okay. you. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? We'll go on to the next question then. This one is from Guzman, 1611. Guzman asks Esteban, what is his explanation for the human artifacts and bones found in the South Carolina phosphate beds? which contains dinosaur bones. Go ahead, Esteban. <clears throat> oh, wow. So specific. Uh, <laughs> I guess, you know, uh, okay. They contain dinosaur bones. Uh, what, modern dinosaurs? Like the birds? Uh, I, n human, human bones have never been found in the same strata as dinosaurs, unless there was an earthquake or some kind of crazy event that, turn things up i don't know anything about this specific case again it's so specific <laughs> like a, like i know all this stuff but so I, I can't really speak on that specific thing you know what i mean i don't want to sound like i uh i think i know everything or anything like that <clears throat> humility you know well thanks for that answer there uh, saban uh, did you have a quick response dr hoven yeah, the phosphate beds in South Carolina that were mined out mostly about 100 years ago, they were digging out phosphates. Uh, there are many books that have been written about it. I've got a couple in my library here about them finding all sorts of strange things in these phosphate beds, including dinosaur, uh, human artifacts, and dinosaur bones have been found together. Esteban, if somebody told you dinosaurs, and I don't mean birds, birds are not dinosaurs. That's one of the really dumbest theories they've come up with. Uh, but <coughs> dinosaurs, giant reptiles, have been found. There's evidence of them living with man from all over the world from many sources. They always lived with man. The Bible says everything was made in six days. And the phosphate beds are just one of thousands of examples where there's evidence, physical evidence of them living together. I will point out, I don't think anybody has ever in the world found human bones and chicken bones in the same rock strata. Would that prove humans and chickens did not live at the same time? Would that be a logical conclusion? Uh, we got chickens in our yard over here. No, they did live at the same time, but you don't normally find their bones together when a catastrophe because humans don't hang out with chickens a lot. So the fact that bones are not found together is not an evidence against them living together. I don't know how you guys can't see that third grade level common sense behind that. 
However, with that said, I will say, I think they have been found together and the Carolina phosphate beds are one of many examples of that. Well, thanks for the response there, Dr. Hoven. This is the final question that we have from Matt Bond in the chat. He asks for uh, Kent. He says, because there is evidence that floods have happened, how does that prove it was a global flood as spoken of in the Bible? Floods and natural disasters happen all the time. Go ahead. Oh, floods happen all the time. I've been through four hurricanes, I've tornadoes. Yeah, it happens all the time. It doesn't prove the Bible at all. I think that there's, there are continent-wide sediment layers like limestone. Once one layer covers a huge part of the United States. So this would be a really big flood. Uh, I think, I'm, but I see, I'm not asking everybody to pay for my flood story in the Bible to be taught. I think it'd be silly for God to tell Noah to build an ark if it's going to be a local flood. Tell him to move. I think you could move anywhere with 120 years warning. So I think the whole story would be silly with if, if it's just a local flood. Certainly there are hundreds of legends of a worldwide flood. Why would there be 330 now, I believe, flood legends? Creationism.org has a list of them and tells all about them. So uh, I do believe in the worldwide flood. I do believe the Bible story is exactly correct. However, I'm not asking that to be taught at taxpayer expense. <clears throat> awesome. And did you have a quick response to that, Esteban? Uh, well, I just lost my, uh, my, my train of thought. I, ha I did. Uh... Oh, yes, uh, about the point of there being so many uh, flood myths. Uh, I, I, I take that as the exact opposite of confirmation. It, it just means that people copied and pasted, basically. They're just like, change a little detail here, a little detail there. We know this happens. Interpolations and, and then redactions of interpolations and different <clears throat> stories evolve over time, and then they branch off into different myths and legends. and uh, So that really... And we know people exaggerate uh, a lot. So, yeah, one large flood in one local area could have been a story that really happened. And then it evolved and became 300 different myths. It doesn't confirm uh, a global flood <laughs> whatsoever. Okay, well, thank you to both debaters for all your answers to the questions from the audience. Uh, it's been it's been a great debate. It's definitely going to be uh, one to remember. Uh, before we shut it down, uh, if the two debaters wanted to uh, plug in their channels, advertise what they're doing, um, I'm fine with that. Go ahead, Esteban. What are you trying to do? My... Uh, <clears throat> My Twitter is the only thing I, I like to plug. I'm going to be starting a channel uh, on YouTube uh, in the near future where we talk about all the stuff that Ken Hoven hates, and uh, hopefully we can make him mad a few times. Uh, but other than that, my Twitter is Apostereori Unum. Uh, I suppose they could link that in the description or something to for spelling, but that's my Twitter account. Uh, and um, I'm usually on there every, pretty much every day. So feel free to uh, send a direct Hoven, direct message and follow. And if you have some final words there, Dr. Hoven, go ahead. Well, sure. Yes. Uh, my name is Ken Hoven. We have Dinosaur Adventure Land in Lenox, Alabama, straight north of Pensacola, Florida, 70 miles. Our YouTube channel, Kent Hovind Official, Hovind, H-O-V-I-N-D, it's a Norwegian name, Kent Hovind Official, our website, drdino.com. If anybody would like to come by, we can take a tour of our science center where we teach real science that God made the world, and we, it's all free. Come on down. We have 10 lakes for boating and fishing, and bring a four-wheeler, sign a paper that if you break your leg, you're fixing it, not me, because you cannot guard against stupid. And so we let stupid people come here and ride their four-wheeler and have a good time up and down the sand dunes. And if you break your leg, we'll haul you to the hospital, but that's about it. Drop you off at the door and let you fix it on your own. <laughs> so we have a blast around here. We have visitors coming from all over the world to see this place. And we want to teach truth. The truth is nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog. So it's logical to say maybe God made the dogs and they produced variations within that kind. The truth is God made everything in six days and dinosaurs always live with man. They did not live millions of years ago. Anybody teaches dinosaurs live millions of years ago is woefully ignorant of the facts. They they were just called by different names, dragons or something like that in different cultures. But there's overwhelming evidence of dinosaurs living with man. And I'm just sick and tired of the evolutionists taking over our school system 
And I think would, I, I'm going to make myself a T-shirt, trying to get the religion of evolution out of our schools. Thank you for the idea, Esteban. Come on down, visit Dinosaur Adventureland. Be glad to give you a tour.